welcome everyone to the April Blue Trail Guide webinar series. I'm very pleased that all of you were able to join us. I want to uh, welcome you to our webinar, Ask the Tough Questions to Improve Your Organization's Brand and Message. Technical support. Um, if your connection is lost, as always, please feel free to log in using your unique web link and passcode that was provided to you when you registered with GoToWebinar. Additionally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on next Tuesday, May 2nd for viewing at the Blue Trails Guide blog, bluetrailsguide.org backslash blog. Additionally, if you have any other technical issues during the webinar, please feel free to send me an email. My email is below, fagustine at americanrivers.org. Additionally, as many of you know, we do um, experience a slight delay on GoToWebinar, so please be patient as the slide moves forward um, and give it about three to five seconds to, um, to progress forward as Kim is speaking. And then finally, um, we encourage audience participation throughout our webinar series, and I would love for you to ask any and all questions throughout the webinar, um, which is available um, in the question box on your GoToWebinar side panel. Um, so please feel free to ask throughout the webinar, or you can feel free to save them um, through the end. We'll leave about five minutes at the end for um, questions and answers with our presenter, Kim. And a transcript of all of these questions and answers will be available on uh, next Tuesday, May 2nd, with a recording at bluechildguide.org backslash blog. And without further ado, I want to turn um, the, presen the presentation over to our uh, presenter this morning, which is Kim Fox, who's the Director of Strategic Marketing and owner of Fox Marketing. Kim is a highly disciplined executive who has the ability to see the big picture. She's a proven leader with more than 30 years of marketing, advertising, and promotional experience. She has strong strategic promotional experience, as well as strategic planning skills, organizational abilities, and extensive experience in helping companies build brand and effective communications programs. Her company has developed, implemented, and managed marketing, planning, and branding programs for more than 140 clients of various scopes and sizes. She feels very fortunate to have a career and life alongside the South Carolina coast. So without further ado, Kim, I want to go ahead and turn the webinar over to you. Thanks so much, Faye, and thanks everybody for joining um, me today. I'm very thrilled to be able to, to share this information with you. Um, clear communications, as you all well know, is always important and challenging. Um, and trying to figure out if your message resonates with who you want it to resonate with. Um, but also today with all of the noise, um, that's out there, all the various messaging that is going on and people are receiving on a daily basis makes communication really even more um, challenging. Um, uh, change the slide, Faye, sorry. There we go. So um, understanding and planning your message is very vital and trying to make it as unique as it possibly can be um, is vital, but the payoff in the effort of doing that um, can be very, very, very rewarding. Um, in anything with life, there should be a plan, and I've always taken uh, Norman Pearl's quote to heart with everything I do, plan your work and work your plan. I know that when I don't do that, I feel very swamped, out of sorts, and totally disoriented. Um, but whenever I do plan my work and work that plan, I have met my goals and most mostly exceeded them. And in supporting some of my clients, uh, we encourage that. And, and they, too, have, have seen the difference in taking the time to put together a plan um, for messaging. So where do we start first in developing a messaging? I'm sure you all have done SWOT analysis where you've spent some time looking at your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and if you're doing that, and you're doing that on a regular basis, congratulations. Um, but if you haven't, that's really a really great go-to place to start. Strengths and weaknesses are being some in 
internal influences that make your organization go. Um, those you have control over, you can improve them, you can change them, make adjustments um, in midstream. Then your opportunities and threats are being the external influences that affect your, uh, your organization that you typically have no control over. But it's how you overcome them or address them internally that will help shape your message. And then taking a hard look at your target audiences and really kind of um, defining them as deeply as you possibly can is a great way to do an assessment and to start your messaging um, planning. So let's just take a look at strengths. These are just some questions and there's many more that, that you can access in order to, to have an effective uh, SWOT analysis session with your um, employees or some of your key volunteers or some of your key donors um, would be a good way to start and just have what we call just a workshop um, exercise. But some of the questions that you can ask are, for example, what are the project, if there is a specific project, what are those assets? Um, is there an expertise that you all have or an expert on staff or who is a donor um, that, that is an asset to you? Um, is there a special process that you have invented in order to uh, complete a project that, that you can boast about um, and that will kind of make you unique to other organizations that are similar to you? Um, is there um, unique resources that you have or that you have developed in order to um, help you be effective? Those are the types of strengths that you should uh, really sit down and think about and, and put down on paper um, with, your, with your team. So let's just look at some questions for weaknesses. Um, are there areas that you need to improve upon? Um, and what are those? And how do you think you can improve upon them to, to transition them into more of a strength? Um, are there, uh, is your mission overly broad or too specific? Um, if you're overly broad in your mission, this will not give you the ability to really hone in on some specifics that can appeal to one of your target audiences. Um, but if you're too specific, your message will have a very, very narrow appeal and will not allow you to maybe expand um, your exposure to um, other audiences. For opportunities, um, you know, what external changes present uh, interesting opportunities? Will there be a pending legislation that will become uh, an opportunity for your organization? Um, what are some trends that are emerging that can benefit you? Um, people like to be in the know and they like to be on the cutting edge of something. So that opportunity um, as part of a message could resonate with uh, some of your target audiences. So threats, uh, any critical issues that could block your process? Um, what are the obstacles that you're facing in your current mission? And of course, are the government regulations going to affect you? Just anything out there that could threat a process um, or a, a of you progressing uh, in a project or in raising your your funds. But interesting enough, when you think about it, most of your strengths can also be weaknesses. And some of your opportunities can also potentially be threats. So when you do sit down and go through the SWOT analysis, it's kind of great to look at it from all corners. So once you've gone through your strength, weaknesses, um, opportunities and threats, you might want to just go back again and, and see if any of your strengths could potentially become weaknesses and if any of your opportunities can potentially come, become threats and address them from those, those angles as well. So let's just take a look at then you're defining your audience and this is pretty um, basic and, and pretty obvious, but what groups and organizations do you depend upon to complete a project or to help in, in funding? 
um, what decision makers and community leaders that you need um, behind you in order to make um, your goal happen. Uh, what partners um, are you partnering with and is it truly a mutually beneficial relationship? Um, is there, uh, are they really truly helping you achieve your goals? And just thinking about how those relationships can even be improved upon. Um, you know, you can look at demographics even with, within these groups. Um, you know, if there is a, an organization that is um, uh, like the Women's League, um, then thinking about that from what would make the female audiences um, a uh, what would appeal to them. Um, so just taking a look at age, sex, family composition, um, earnings and geographic locations. Um, age specifically because if you have an older demographic, some of them are not as technically inclined to, um, to get news or to, to understand what's going on. So emailing and uh, online efforts may not be as effective if your demographic is, is older. You can also look at lifestyle, whether they're conservative, innovative, they're liberal, their leaders or followers, introverted, extroverted, how often do they respond to communication, um, other lifestyle orientations that, that uh, describe your target audience. Um, and what are their hot buttons? Um, if you know that there's a group of people that are focused on certain types of projects, um, then being able to understand what those buttons are. Um, and then why do they need you? And when do, when do they need you? When do all of your audiences um, uh, come to you? Um, what's important to them? And, and how are you different from other organizations that may be offering the same services um, that, that you do? So now that you've done your SWOT analysis and you've also taken some time to really define your audiences, then you can kind of go through um, coming up with what your absolute unique value would be. Um, this should probably be pretty easy because the information is just pulled from your, from your SWOT analysis and from your target audiences. Um, but make sure that you're focusing on what makes your constituents tick. That should be a consistent goal. It should not be, in a slide you'll see in a, in a little bit, should not be about you or your organization. It should be what you do for your target audience. So your objectives, I mean, if you have business and or marketing goals, um, those should be what you use to determine your message strategy. They all work together. Um, so the next several slides, what we'll do is look at marrying the right audience to each objective, establishing the messaging accordingly to that audience about that objective, and determining the outcome um, goal within a specific time um, that will help you achieve that desired outcome or those desired outcomes if you have different outcomes per audience. But these are just some of the things to think about as you're um, going through each one of your objectives or you are um, establishing your objectives. So the strategies are kind of the how-to. What are the actions are you going to be taking to uh, establish those goals? Are you wanting to increase your donations by a certain percentage? Are you trying to add potential donors to your database? Um, are you trying to get a project approved? So um, what, how are you planning on increasing those donations or getting that project approved? What are some of the strategies that you have to do to meet that objective? Um, but be consistent, again, whatever your mission is, whatever your overreaching mission is, all of your objective strategies and messaging should be consistent with your mission. So developing a new unique selling proposition, this is kind of an, uh, a broad over um, messaging that um, you would use 
pretty much, it's what I call kind of the elevator speech, if you will. It's the same thing that you would probably tell somebody very quickly about your organization. Um, and then as you meet someone, if you find out that they're uh, one of your specific target audience, then you can, we, you would go down deeper into your messaging that would be more focused and more directed toward that particular audience. So your unique selling proposition just talks about what your most compelling benefit and advantage is, um, why your donors donate to your organization, what issues that you solve, um, and we do have a template that we use um, in order to, to, to make this happen, which we'll see here uh, shortly. Um, but the other thing that might be really good to do in, in developing your um, unique um, selling proposition, next slide, oh, there it goes, um, is to interview um, a few of your staff, volunteers, uh, one of your partners, a donor, a decision maker, and a community leader, and just ask them specifics about um, what's important to them. You know, what do you, what does your organization represent to them? What do they see as being a strength, a weakness, an opportunity, or a threat? Um, and you know, that would you know maybe be something that you want to do during your uh, SWOT analysis. Once you finish your SWOT analysis, is then take that information um, to another group that would, would probably give you some outs, more outside uh, insight into your organization. So in crafting that unique selling proposition, we want to look for our sweet spot, and that's the intersection of what's important to your audience, what does your organization do best, and what are you doing that no one else is do? And where all three of those collide is where your sweet spot is. And that's what, really what you want to try to get to from, for your unique selling proposition, which again is your broad uh, over message. So here's a template that we um, have used in several um, developments of unique selling propositions. If you take each item that's in parentheses and focus on it um, and, and develop what those messages are, there may be a message for uh, per your uh, audience, so your con constituent donor benefit. You, there might be one benefit from one target group then, and a different benefit for another target group. So that's where you can, you know, do an overreaching unique selling proposition, and then you can also use the same template to, to go a little deeper in your message that's specific to a certain audience. But your organization name, obviously, and your competitive set um, are typically the same, and they could end up being a little bit different, but um, typically they're the same. I mean, your organization ob name, obviously, but the competitive set is where 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 do you sit? Are you a um, organization for children? Are you an organization for seniors? Um, are you an organization for American Rivers? Um, so that competitive set is typically the same. And then you can look at your constituent and donor benefit, focus on one of your target audiences and determine what that benefit is. And what is your competitive advantage for that particular target audience? So in crafting the message, now you've got your unique selling proposition. Um, and you want to make sure that your messaging is about them, about who your target audience is, the with them, what's in it for me, not about what you do, but what they get from you. Um, and what does your audience care about? You know, what makes them tick? You know, do they want to feel good? Do they want to be powerful? Do they want to save time? Um, do they want to save the world? Um, whatever it is that that makes them tick, that's the messaging that you should you should focus on. And what reward? Oops, let me get back. Sorry. Faye, can you go back for me? Thank you. Sorry. Um, 
what is the reward for taking the action and that action being what is there the donors reward what is the legislators reward for taking an action in your favor how does the audience take action make it sure that that it's clear and specific and easy to do in order for them to do whatever action that is whether it be donating money or um, passing a bill and to make it memorable make sure it's personal to them that it's tangible that it that it meets their hot buttons if you 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 will what is that little sweet spot that you're looking for um, with that particular uh, audience member again engaging them is is very important um, with all the noise that we have out there it's it's just so easy to get lost um, so make sure that that you can be accessible and that you cultivate them and that you are speaking to them uh, the way they like to be spoken to. And inspiring, obviously, is um, uh, the most awesome way to make a connection is, you know, offering real-life glimpses into your organization and what, um, what goals you have been able to meet, um, asking for feedback on a pretty regular basis, um, and sharing successes um, are always great ways to um, keep that messaging out there to connect with your audience. So then hopefully you have gotten some pretty detailed messaging per audience that you want bullet points and, and what, your, what their hot buttons are. And then you need to choose the tools that are going to benefit those particular audiences. As we said earlier, some, of, some older demographics may not be so technically inclined, so traditional tools may be the best way to um, get in front of them. Um, and I'm sure everyone knows what those are. Um, and then also your more modern um, tools, which would be your online tools. Um, that are available for those that may be a more of a younger audience um, that are stimulated by technology. Um, one thing um, uh, to be um, cognizant of is that a lot of these online opportunities, they may not cost that much money to do, which is a great thing and a great benefit, but it does take time. And so you, you need to make sure that you have resources available to you to be able to manage um, those online resources. They can be hugely effective, but they do take a lot of time and they do take some talent um, and somebody who's skilled in the technology. So um, make sure you're not over-promising yourself in doing something if you're typically not doing it now and or if you do not have the resources available to um, to pull that particular tool off. Did I go too far? Faye, can you go back for me, please? I think I'm I think I'm okay, but I just want to double check and make sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So define your budget based on how you're going to communicate with your audiences, um, create a timeline, what are your short-term out, outcomes. A short-term could be six months to a year, long-term could be uh, another 18 to 24 months or even three years out if you um, plan that far in advance. But make sure that you have a timeline that's pretty detailed on um, specific dates that you want to try to meet. Um, and, and figure out who is going to be assigned to that role to make sure it is completed in that time frame uh, and make it clear as to what that outcome is um, what that outcome is to be and when is it to, when it's to be and how it's to be done and then of course develop an action plan per tactic if you can so if you've got a certain audience you've got your message that you're speaking to them you've chosen the tools that you want to approach um, uh, them with and you have a timeline that you want to be able to meet. So being able to put a, that action plan for that one uh, target audience um, 
could be a, a very helpful tool. And, and then once you've got your plan moving forward, you probably need to try to schedule some time to review where you're, where you're at, whether that be weekly, um, bi-monthly, um, quarterly, however you feel that would be um, worth the time and effort for your team to reconvene and to review. You know, how are you going to measure your success if you are, for instance, looking to increase your donations by a certain percentage over a certain period of time? Um, what are the short-term um, measurements that will uh, help you to decide that you're on track? And then being able to evaluate um, towards the end of maybe your short term, let's go back to your SWOT and checking on your key audiences to make sure that you are um, continuing to uh, communicate the way that you need to communicate. Um, if there are some things you want to add to your SWOT at that point in time and make adjustments, that would be a good time to do it. And then, of course, at the end of a project or at the end of the campaign, it's always good to go back and just um, evaluate where you started and where you ended up and being able to make notes on the next time that you do a campaign similar to that or have a project similar to that that you will, um, you know, make some improvements to that, um, to that process. And that is all that I have today. And I appreciate everybody's attention and time. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kim, for taking the time to walk us through um, your SWAT training. I know I found it really helpful, um, and I can tell already by the questions that a number um, that our audience found it helpful as well. Um, so as a reminder, we'll leave these final few moments of the webinar for our question and answer session. If you haven't already asked your um, question in the question box, please feel free to go ahead and, and ask it now. Um, and we'll either answer them in the time we have now, or they will be included um, in a transcript of question um, with the recorded webinar next Tuesday, May 5th. So Kim, um, we've got a few questions in uh, that have already come up that I'll start with. So the first one is, do you have a recommendation for how often you should change your messaging as it relates to communicating with your audience? Yes, I, I would say you don't want to change it that often unless there is a um, compelling reason to change it, and that's why you would want to go through evaluating um, at certain places during your process to see if there's another opportunity that's opened up or if there is a um, threat that has um, evolved over, uh, you know, since the beginning of your project. But typically, your messaging should stay pretty true to what you create. And consistency is always best, and being consistent with that message, not changing it just for the sake of changing it. But if there is a if there is a reason to change it, then um, that would come from from a SWOT, uh, and it has to be a pretty compelling change. It can't be a change because you've gotten a new employee, and that employee does social media really well. Um, that shouldn't change your your um, your messaging that will just maybe help you expand your uh, tools in order to get the message out. Great, right. thanks, Kim. Yeah, that's that's perfect, and that's a really great segue into the second question that I want to ask you, um, which uh, is from an audience member who says, "What is the best combination of online or social media tools that you have found to be most effective when used together? For example, website and social media." an online donor management system, Twitter and Instagram, et cetera? Um, that's a great question. Um, I would first say that each social media does have a, you know, certain demographic following. And so if you have, a, you know, an older audience is probably Facebook, um, uh, and Instagram is probably a younger audience. Um, of course, there's now this Snapchat, which I don't even uh, – understand yet, but um, um, I think it, um, 
it's really based on your audience. Um, but I have seen that Instagram and Facebook together work really well um, in getting your message out to uh, a more more audiences than um, you know some young, some older, and um, they work well together. But again, I think it's I think it has to do with your audiences um, and. You still, I think today, you still want to drive people to your website. Um, so if there is a blog that you do, then then posting the blog on Facebook and well, all your social media chan channels that will lead them back to your to your uh, website or to your blog um, is still very important because that's where all of your information is. That's where you want your donors to sign up. That's where you want them to be able to donate if you do that online. Um, so that's, I think, still key is the website, is driving people still to the website. That's great. Thanks so much, Kim. And I think we'll ask one more quick question um, prior to logging off for this webinar. So the last question um, that we'll take time for today is, um, how long does a SWOT analysis usually take? Is it, you know, a multi-day process, a week process, or does it sort of depend on, you know, the size and the breadth of the organization? Um, we've done SWOT analysis in half-day sessions and um, in all-day sessions. I would probably say that based on that, uh, and we've done them from four or five people to 12 people in a room. If you get any, if you get any larger than probably 10 or 12 people, that's probably too many to have in a SWOT analysis. So being very sure that you have people uh, on your SWAT team that um, can can share different sides of, uh, of your organization or different sides of a project are, is a good thing to have and try to minimize it at 10 to 12 people and I would say a day uh, a, you know a good seven to eight hours um, of spending time in a room locked up in a room and just putting getting those flip charts out and writing on the flip charts and pasting them up to the wall um, uh, and throwing darts at the wall uh, on certain things is, is, the, is the way to go and that's the commitment. But you should be able to do a good SWAT in, in a day. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kim. And thank you, um, everyone who participated in our April monthly webinar. I um, really appreciate the time you took, Kim, to um, give an excellent presentation, and then each of you for taking 30 minutes out of your day to listen in. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, this is being recorded, so it will be available along with a transcript of the rest of the questions that were not answered during our short question and answer session um, next Tuesday, May 5th. So stay tuned for that, and I will also send out a reminder email once the webinar is posted. So thank you again for participating in our April webinar, and I look forward to seeing you all back in May. Have a great rest of your afternoon.